This video describes new equivalence and non-inferiority tests for variances that have been added to Stack Graphics 19. Equivalence analysis is used to demonstrate that a significant difference does not exist between either two variances or between a variance and a target value. This is the reverse of a standard hypothesis test which is designed to demonstrate that a significant difference does exist. Suppose we have two populations, perhaps a brand name drug and a generic, two measurement systems or two production methods. We wish to collect samples from each population and demonstrate that the two population variances are equivalent. We'll define equivalence as a situation in which the standard deviations of the two populations has a ratio that falls between a lower equivalent limit and an upper equivalence limit. The lower equivalence limit will be a value such as 0.9 and the upper equivalence limit a value such as 1.1. This slide pairs a standard hypothesis test the two-sided equivalence test. In the standard hypothesis test, the null hypothesis is that the two standard deviations are equal, and the alternative hypothesis is that the two standard deviations are not equal. Possible conclusions of the test are either to reject H0 and conclude that the variances are different, or not reject H0, in which case the variances may not be different. In an equivalence test, a null hypothesis is that the ratio of the two standard deviations is either less than a lower equivalence limit or greater than an upper equivalence limit. The alternative hypothesis is that the ratio is between those two limits. Possible conclusions of the equivalence test are either to reject H0 and conclude that the variances are equivalent, or not reject H0, in which case the variances may not be equivalent. There are also cases where we wish to show that one standard deviation is not inferior to a second. If we did a standard one-sided f-test, the null hypothesis would be that sigma 1 is greater or equal to sigma 2, and the alternative hypothesis that sigma 1 is less than sigma 2. In that case, the possible conclusions would either be reject H0, in which case sigma 1 is less than sigma 2, or not reject H0, in which case sigma 1 may not be less than sigma 2. In the non-inferiority test, the null hypothesis is that the ratio of the standard deviations is greater than some upper equivalence limit. The alternative is that that ratio is less than or equal to the upper equivalence limit. Possible conclusions of the non-inferiority test are either reject H0, in which case sigma 1 is not inferior to sigma 2, or do not reject H0, in which case sigma 1 may be inferior to sigma 2. I've loaded into the Stack Graphics 19 data sheet 50 measurements of yield from each of three different methods, method A, method B, and method C. You see from the box and whisker plot that the variability of those three different methods seems to be about the same. I'd like to be able to claim with 95% certainty that in fact the variances are equivalent, so I'll need to do an equivalence test. To do that, I'll go to the top menu and select Compare, Equivalence and Non-Inferiority Test, Comparison of Two Variances.
I need to tell it how my data is structured. In this case, it's in data and code columns. The column containing the dependent variable, the measurements, is yield. The column containing levels of the factor is method. When I press OK, Analysis Options dialog box will appear. There are several things I need to specify. First off, I need to specify the null hypothesis. Do I want to do a two-sided equivalence test or a one-sided non-inferiority test? If I'm doing a two-sided test, the null hypothesis is that the standard deviations are not equivalent. In the case of a one-sided test, I could specify the null hypothesis that one population is inferior because its standard deviation is less than the other. That would not be very common. Or that one population is inferior because its standard deviation is greater than the other. Over here, I specify the lower and upper equivalence limits. I'll take the defaults of 0.9 and 1.1. If I want to be 95% confident about the results, I'll leave alpha at 5%. There's also an alternative method for displaying confidence intervals that I'm not going to select. I'll then press OK, and it will do the equivalence test. There are two ways for me to view the output. One by looking at p-values in this table, and the second by looking at the graph. Let's start with the graph. What you see here are confidence intervals for the ratio of the standard deviations of two methods. A versus B, A versus C, B versus C. For me to claim that the standard deviations of two methods are equivalent, the entire confidence interval would have to fall between the lower equivalence limit and the upper equivalence limit. In this case, none of the confidence intervals falls completely between the limits, so I can't claim equivalence of the variances for any pair of populations. I can also look at the analysis summary. Here you see the sample statistics for methods A, B, and C. You also see the ratios of the standard deviations for each pair of methods. Sigma A over Sigma B is about 1.15. Sigma A over Sigma C about 0 0.94. And Sigma B over Sigma C about 0 0.8. To run the equivalence test, you actually do two one-sided tests. You test whether the ratio of the standard deviations is less than the lower equivalence limit, and also whether the ratio is greater than the upper equivalence limit. There's a p-value for each of those two one-sided tests. In order to be able to claim equivalence, the maximum of the two p-values for any pair of means would have to be less than 0 0.05. You see down here, on a comparison of A versus B, A versus C, and B versus C, the maximum p-value in every case is greater than 0 0.05, so equivalence has not been demonstrated for any pair of variances. The last thing I'm going to do is change from an equivalence test to a non-inferiority test. To do that, I'll press the right mouse button, go to Analysis Options, and change the null hypothesis from not equivalent to inferior greater than. This will test 
whether I can claim non-inferiority of one standard deviation compared to another. The upper equivalence limit of 1.1 is the only one that's relevant here. It basically says we'll call a standard deviation non-inferior if it's no more than 10% of another. If I press OK, I think I'll look at the graph. And now you'll see the single upper equivalence limit. The confidence limits, two of them cross that upper equivalence limit. The third does not. In fact, the third compares the standard deviation of B to the standard deviation of C. And because that interval is completely below the upper equivalence limit, I have